Hi folks, today on the workbench we have an LPB, which stands for Low Power Broadcast Transmitter. It's an AM broadcast transmitter, an RC6A, and it was uh, this one was built in around 1969, and uh, let's take a look at it. This one was shipped to me, believe it or not, with the original instruction book, which has uh, plenty of drawings and all sorts of helpful tips inside. I actually had to use this a couple times to... Make sure I was operating the thing right. So he's got a block diagram of the the RF chain and a spare tube. This is the uh, these all run on what are these uh, 6AL 11s? There's only three of these inside, but having a spare one is great. You can find these pretty common on eBay, and they're they're not too expensive. The front is pretty basic. It um, no indication whatsoever uh, whatsoever other than the neon indicator, just an on-off switch. It comes on. It's pretty dim here. Um, as you can see it coming on. The transmitter takes uh, about a minute to warm up. It, it The tubes and everything have to warm up, and um, it will make RF in about 30 seconds, and it will become pretty stable after about a minute. Let's take a look at the back. We're going to go ahead and flip on the transmitter and let it go ahead and warm up. And uh, while we're doing on that, this is an... This is a uh, mono AM transmitter, like I would say over 99% of them are. Got your gain control here for your audio input, and here's your audio input. There's a, a transformer right behind here, so it doesn't matter which way you do your, your high and low audio. And, uh, it'll take it either way. The badge here says that it was made in December of 1969, and that this one was tuned for 630 kilohertz. The crystal inside is on 1080 um, this one just came from a, a seller online. I don't know if he actually used this for a hobby broadcaster or college or actually maybe at a radio station. I can't find where this actual unit originated from. Um, I've tracked around all the 630s around and haven't been able to find it, nor have I been able to find the 1080. The RF output is a SO239, which will take a PL259 like most ham radio gear or um, some broadcast gear. And the power is a uh, just a normal Edison plug. I've got it plugged down to the power strip. That is warmed up. You can you can see the tubes on the inside are starting to glow. And on the Drake meter here, we have uh, about four watts coming out of it. Well, I see that'd be about three watts with audio drive. It will do about three and a half watts. And this is a four watt model. Uh, I'm I'm sure if we changed all the tubes out and everything, it would make four watts, maybe plus of that. But uh, for all intents and purposes, three watts is fine. Let's power it down and let's take a look on the inside. To access the inside, it's actually pretty simple. There's just these two latches. They're kind of tied, but there's two latches, uh, one on each side. Okay, and the lid lifts right off. Let's take a look on the inside. I'm not going to go over all the, the technical aspects of everything. Um, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you pretty much already know your way around. We've got the two tubes over here that are uh, they work in uh, push-pull for the audio amplifier transformer capacitor uh, this is the audio transformer this is a power transformer and then the final we've got the crystal here which again is if I can zoom in it's crystalled in 1080 this is the Pi network this is the matching network here at the back there are uh, if you don't mind me zooming in let me grab my screwdriver here there's the inductor, there's two capacitors, and there is a neon indicator here. Once you apply power to the unit, which I think I can go ahead and do that now to give you a demonstration. I'll turn the light off here. Turn all the lights off. Once the unit has time to power up and you've got a good match, which this is going into a dummy load, this neon indicator will, will warm up and start to flicker, and you can uh, tune these two capacitors and inductors to the maximum brightest. Now, this is not making full power. Uh, like I said, it's only making three out of the four watts. So sometimes it, it, to get it to flicker, you have to drive it with some audio. Went ahead and grabbed some clip leads and I clipped into some audio. Now you can see that neon indicator. I'm not sure also if you can hear this, I'm not sure if the camera's picking up, but you can also hear the, uh, the tubes whistling. Let's see if we can get a, a better clip of that. I can definitely hear it, but I'm not sure if the camera microphone's picking it up. All right, let's power down, and uh, we'll show you the bottom.
When I originally got this unit, it was pretty dirty and I wanted to clean the inside and out of it. And once I cleaned it up, uh, I'll show you some pictures of that. It was a little grimy, it wasn't too bad, but a little isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels and Q-tips got it all cleaned up. I wanted to clean the inside where I guess the other side of these components are. And I started to take these screws loose and these plates started getting really wobbly and I thought, well, you know what, I'm just gonna box it up and uh, I'm gonna put it back together, I'm not gonna worry about it, but I kind of felt bad. Well, as I was moving it, I noticed it's actually not screwed down to the bottom plate. It actually lifts up. It's a two-handed job, so uh, let's cut and we'll take a look at that. Yeah, so here we are. It's a two-handed job, but it just lifts off the, uh, the bottom plate container here. And now you can take a look at the bottom. I'm not gonna go over all what these components do. Uh, if I can grab my little screwdriver here. Um, you got your transformers, capacitors, and such. I don't see any paper film capacitors in here. I think this has been recapped in the past couple years, not by me. Um, it really looks really clean. Believe it or not, this it was really clean on the inside. I really didn't have to do a whole lot to it. Um, there's a little bit of tape and, and heat shrink, so I think this has been modified. The one thing I can actually see that has been modified on this, um, other than these few things, which I'm not really sure what these are doing, uh, the this tube over here, I believe, has got one of the legs for the tube. Ah, I'm sorry for my camera work here, folks. Um, one of the legs on the tube socket has been replaced with a coil of wire, and rather than taking all this apart, it works. I'm going to leave it. So uh, let's put it all back together and let's get an audio test. So there's a look at the audio test for the LPB RC6A AM broadcast transmitter. The recording of the radio broadcast from this was done on the uh, Redicus, I don't even know, the V115. Um, it records in MP2, I think 96K. So the audio recording that records the SD card on this is, is not the best, but you know, audio sounded pretty good. And uh, thanks for tuning in.